I want to talk to you today about creation versus evolution, the Glen Rose Evidence, Part 2. In a previous discussion, I spoke to you about the human footprints that I had personally excavated along the banks of the Paluxy River and verified by public testimonial that they were genuine. I do recognize that in the past, during the Depression days in the mid-1930s, at least one individual carved a few dinosaur and a few human footprints. And to this date, the evolutionary community refers to that as uh, the mode by which human footprints have been found along the banks of the Paluxy River, namely by carving them, which is not the case. While one man did so, what's the evidence at hand today? Well, uh, some years ago, a high school student named George Adams was credited with discovering the first theropod dinosaur tracks along the banks of the Paluxy River in 1908, over a century ago. And then in 1918, Charlie Moss, returning from the World War, discovered the first human footprints among these tracks, and he verified that. And then in 1932, the same Charlie Moss discovered the first sauropod tracks here at Glen Rose. So the Glen Rose evidence is known worldwide. It is specific. In fact, as Roland T. Byrd in 1938, representing the American Museum of Natural History, excavated a long series of dinosaur footprints on the banks of the Paluxy River and distributed those to the American Museum of Natural History in New York and to other uh, nationally known museums. He also wrote in a first early edition of Thunder in His Footsteps in Natural History, he wrote the following, and later this was removed. He reported seeing at least two human-like footprints, and he wrote, yes, they are apparently real enough among the dinosaur prints. Real as the rock could be, he wrote. The strangest things of their kind I've ever seen. On the surface of each was splayed the near likeness of a human foot, perfect in every detail, but each imprint was 15 inches long. That was in the first edition. Later, that was removed from the text because his honesty had gotten him into difficulty, and the evolutionary community said, that is not possible. We'll have to retract so much if we stand by that. So what about the current evidence at Glen Rose? Not only at the Creation Evidence Museum, not only do we have original human footprints that we've excavated, original human footprints that others in the past have excavated all on private property, but we have additional data, additional items in a geologic column that we have made at the Creation Evidence Museum in Glen Rose, Texas, beginning with a Meister print at the bottom, cup in coal, with uh, the O.W. Willett tracks, with the Delk track, with the hammer, with the finger, we have interlaced the entire geologic column with actual artifacts that have been discovered. And while we didn't discover the originals of some of these, we did discover original human footprints. All of these pertain to the solution of creation versus evolution. The late Dr. Stephen Jay Gould came to the museum when it was just in a little log cabin. Dr. Gould wanted to see the so-called evidence. He saw one of the human footprints, the verdict track. He saw that it was genuine. And he said to the young man standing in for me because I was off speaking, the young Mr. Temple Summers stood in for me that day and uh, he looked at Temple Summers and he said, a human footprint? Did you say this came from this layer of dinosaur footprints as well? Yes. He said, impossible. Young Mr. Summers said, I know it's possible. I helped to excavate it. Stephen J. Gould just turned and walked away, never said another word. I wish it were possible that evolutionists would literally embrace the truth. I had evolutionary persuasion when I came to Glen Rose, and I didn't sleep for four days and nights after discovering a trail of original human footprints 
among the dinosaur footprints that I'd also excavated. Well, I'm grateful for a team that helped in that excavation because I needed a team. I didn't sleep for four days and nights. That's how it wrecked my paradigm. But I was pleased to embrace the truth in the end, and I ask you to do the same.